Hi everyone, it's Maria with Angelfish Design, and today I am excited to share with you my guest design team project for the 60 Days of Diamond Dyes event. We will be using the Dogwood Flowers dyes and the Budding Flourish. In today's tutorial, we're going to focus on two specific techniques of dry brushing and layering to achieve a really nice shabby chic look for our journal cover. All of the supplies you'll need for this project will be in the description box below. For our first layer, we're going to use old book pages and any book pages from any book will do. And we're going to tear off the edges of those pages because I kind of like to just have the words in the background without you know, the blank margins. So we just tear all the way around there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Make it to the size of uh, your 5x7 card substrate that we're using. I just used some simple Elmer's glue for this part. Squirt it on kind of all around. Lay that down and use that old card to smear the glue or to rub the glue towards the edges of your paper. This technique allows you to not need a whole lot of glue. And if you have any edges that pop up on you, just put a tiny little bit more glue and press them down with your card. Next up, we're gonna start putting some white paint over the book pages. White paint is really forgiving because it's so translucent, so you don't have to worry too much about getting too much paint in one spot if you don't want it there. Um, I always like to start with a very light hand, you know, barely touching your page with the brush, barely having any paint on the brush at first because you can always put more layers on, but you can't take them off so well. So around the edges, I put the most amount of paint, and then working towards the inside when there isn't as much paint on the brush to just tone down the writing in the background. And again, just build up layer by layer the amount of paint along your edges. And it's okay if that background paper starts to warp a little bit. Not really a problem. It'll all dry out and just add some extra texture. Now here we're putting on the flourishes and I've done a sweeping motion with my hand because we kind of want those flourishes to be on the paper in kind of an arching movement from the top to the bottom of the page. And we're adding our flowers onto that. I did a grouping of three of the larger of the dogwood flowers. And then for this part, adding some small buds by cutting the smaller flower into four parts and rounding out its corner. When you glue these down, we just want to spot glue them. We don't want to put glue over the entire thing. We want to leave those curly edges unglued so that we can put things above and under different elements as we attach them to the paper. Once those flourishes are glued down, we can start gluing down our flowers. And again, I just put a spot of glue in the center of the flower and also slightly crease the petals upward to give them a bit of dimension. Now with our green medium flower, we're going to cut that apart into four, just like we did for the buds, and curl around that little edge there. And these will be our leaves for our flowers. And 
just tuck those in in various spots. Big flower is always nice to have three leaves and then one leaf here or there for other flowers. And then when I'm gluing them in, I started to only put glue on one side of the leaf and then thought better of it and figured glue on both edges of that leaf would work out better. That way there was glue attaching it to the flower above as well as the paper below. Now we're going to be adding the gems to the middle of the flower and I use glossy accents for that. I find they hold gems very well. So we'll put the large one on the large flowers, a couple of medium ones on the medium flowers, and then I'm going to even though these tiny little gems have adhesive, I'm still going to use the glossy accents to put those on. I don't like anything to fall off of my pages or my projects. And it's looking good so far. If you want it at this point, you could even quit here. But I'm going to go ahead and layer some more. So now we're starting to get a little more of our shabby chic look by dry brushing some white paint over the flowers. Again, we just want to use a very light hand, light amount of paint on the brush, very little paint. The more you practice with this, the better idea you'll get at how much paint should be on the brush, but it really just should be a small amount. We're just trying to tone down the color and kind of give it a overall white look. And again, I pop up all of those petals so that they're standing away from the background. All right, so now we are going to start working a bit on the background again. We want to go around this whole area where the flowers are and put a little extra white paint there. We want this section of flowers to really pop. So our first layer is going to be some additional white. It helps make this area more solid so that additional colors will really shine through and not be muddied at all by the text in the background. And it'll really help our flowers to pop from the background. And it's okay if you're getting it on the little flourish vines or, you know, a little extra on the flowers. Don't overthink it. It's okay. I just want to get in all those little crevices underneath the flowers. And that was another reason why we popped those petals up so that we can get underneath them and why we don't glue it down all around. Okay, now we're gonna start with the fun part. We're gonna add some gold into our design. And we want to have a little bit of water on our brush. Not a whole lot, we don't want to drown it out, but a little bit of water to make the paint more fluid and um, a little bit more translucent. And I have a paper towel nearby so that I can blot any excess. And I'm coming back in with a little bit more water to lighten it up some more. Then I'm going to draw some of that extra paint keep dabbing some extra paint from the center and just go around the edges a little bit to divine, define the edges of our page. And now we want to tone down that gold a little bit, not a lot, just a little. So again with a very, very dry brush, which is where it gets its name from, not a lot of paint on that brush, we're just going to dab over that gold to lighten it up a bit, tone it down some. Now we're going to come in again with a little bit of pink. We just want to put just a touch, just a touch of blush 
on this one. So we don't want to have a lot of paint on our brush at all. And again, with a light hand, if you're just dabbing it very lightly, you can keep adding more until you're happy. But again, if you get too much in a spot, you might not be as happy with it. Now with the aqua, we're just going to dab around the edges because this help repeat, helps to repeat the color from the flower in another part of our picture. And I'm blending a little bit of white with that to tone that down as well. So the theme here is we always use white over everything to tone down the color and that helps give it the shabby look. We're in the final stretch here. We do want to have quite a bit of water on this brush to do this splattering. And you want to hold that brush firmly in your non-dominant hand and then tap it with your dominant hand. And the same with the white. You want to have kind of a wet brush so that that splatters very easily. I hope you all have enjoyed this tutorial and will give these techniques a try. I've put additional information on Diamond Eyes and the 60 Day Event in the description box below. And as a special thank you, you can use the coupon code THANKSANGELFISHDESIGN to receive 10% off your order and free U.S. shipping. And for my friends outside of the U.S., you will receive free international shipping with a $35 purchase. Thanks so much! and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.